and you're going to hear me represent myself. Just keep that in mind. So good afternoon in here, the restream room. So what we're talking about today is the MACD. Today is a big deal with the MACD, and I want to go over step-by-step step on how I create it. So the first thing is to go in to what is the MACD. All it is is an oscillator. You can use the RSI. You can use a lot of them. And the thing is, definitely everybody asks, how do you know if it's overbought or oversold? Well, it comes down to determining if it's in an uptrend or downtrend, but you got to combine it with other indexes. So if something is hooking down, which I'll show you, and the other ones aren't, but they're really breaking down, then the likelihood is the rest of the, uh, the similar index options will also break down. So just keep that in mind. So let's go step by step on how I do it. First thing is the MACD. Where on earth do you find it? Well, there are a lot of iterations of it. I do MACD two lines. All I'm doing is a three simple moving average and a 10. All the MACD is, is you take the 10 moving average on a day or whatever period minus the three and it becomes a plot. So, and then an average, a 16 moving average of that plot. So, and I'll show that, but it's MACD two lines. So when you go in here, and let me just tell you, I'm using simple. So you could go simple, exponential, weighted. There are a lot of ripoffs that they put their own name on this. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you go into studies, edit studies, and you go over to the left and you'll see MACD. Oh, you'll see the MACD right here, two lines. So you see that right there. Well, a lot of them have like LBR. I'm not going to really get into this, but see that 310? All that is, is the normal MACD with an expo uh, exponential, not simple. I mean, there's other lines probably attached, but that's basically all it is. So just keep that in mind in there. So the first thing I do is I add the MACD. So if I go in here and add the MACD, and I'm going to try to fit this into, uh, you know, as fast as I can. So it's supposed to be like three to five minutes of the part I'm recording. So I'll do that as fast as I can. So when you go into this and you go to MACD on the left, two lines, just go to MACD, two lines. The default is 12, 26, and 9. I have found that's not that reliable. Um, for years and years, I got a stock service, a chart service before you could get this plotted, and it was 31016. That's number one. Number two in here is how do you find it on TradingView? A lot use TradingView. So in TradingView, you go into studies, and all you do is go to community scripts, and you go to MECD. There's 8 million of them, 8 million of them. I just do MACD. That's it, just MACD. And that's how I came up down here. So in, in here, when you get the 310, 16, then you do this. Do you want it as the simple or do you want it as the exponential? Now, I go back and forth 8 million times seeing which one's better or not, and I found that it's a push. It's a push. So we'll stay with this simple. So we'll just stay with the simple. So number one, you're determining the oscillator. If it's overbought, oversold. That doesn't mean to blindly short or blindly buy. But I then want to determine the trend. Well, as you see in here, it's a lot easier right here. So when it's overbought in an uptrend, yeah, you don't play, it could stay overbought. Right here, you might say, well, it's over the 50 moving average because I'm going on the 50 moving average or the ATR trailing stop. As you see, it's in between it. So you might say, well, that could be a bull flag. So it's overbought as you see on the bottom, but it could be a bull flag. So how do you know whether to trust that it's going to hook down? 
and I'll show you how, at least on how I do it. So I do a thing all the time called box charts. So the box charts are, I post every Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. I did a Monday night because we weren't, uh, it was a holiday. So the whole idea is a lot of these are way overbought. And my key was if multiple indexes hook down, then even the ones that are a little above the 50 moving average are probably going to go down. So let me show you what we're talking about. Here's the transports. They were by far the weakest. So they were under the 50 already and the MACD on the bottom hooked down. So just keep that in mind. When something's overbought and you're wondering how overbought, all you're looking for is, like I said, all you're looking for is then reversal patterns. Like I mentioned, I've used 310.16 for about 40 years and it just works better. I used a chart service. I've tried 8 million of them and it works better. So that's all I know. So when I see it start to hook down, I look here and try to figure out reversal patterns. So if you see a reversal, usually what happens is you get a doji and then you get a follow through to the downside. So now you got the transports going down. So then you got the Dow doing the same thing. Once the transports had this dramatic sell off today, then I'm like, well, if that decisively got under this 50 moving average and that's decisively under it and this is approaching it, the idea that the NASDAQ and the ES are going to break up or break down, it's all about probability. So if the probability of them breaking up, not breaking down goes down dramatically about them breaking up if a lot of other indexes, even if they don't seem related, if they hook down and keep down. So let me show you what we're talking about. I showed you the transports. I showed you the Dow. And all I'm doing in here is, and this is difficult, it's art, not a science, determining if they're in an uptrend or downtrend. So the YM could have been in an uptrend, but what happened? It hooked down. I mean, the transports pulled it down. This is under it. All right. The NASDAQ, uptrend or downtrend. Well, for now, it's above it. So how about the bond market? Definitely a downtrend. Definitely the overbought worked. So all you're doing in here is not blindly shorting, but when it gets somewhat overbought at some kind of resistance. So you could take this right here right here, and then you look for the reversal pattern, the follow through. And that'll tell you that that's hooking down, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So gold, yep, there it is, hooking down, and guess what? That's above the 50. So you had something in an uptrend, and it still went down because they all hooked down. So they all hooked down. Transports, bonds, gold, Dow, Russell, and what are the two left standing? The ES and the NASDAQ. So then it comes down to, well, do you try to anticipate the NASDAQ and short it because it's holding up better than the rest? Well, you could do that. The problem is, as you see, it's relatively slow and the NASDAQ's acting great today. So if I do anything by anticipating, it's going to be longer term. So it'll be, let's say, a week longer term. So figuring that these will go down enough that the NASDAQ will finally listen. And so just keep that in mind. And Papillon, like I said, I've tried 8 million different iterations and this one works the best that I've seen. I mean, it's still an art, not a science. But this is the way I look at it. So you got the overbought right here. Got the overbought right here, as you see. But then you're like, well, how do you know this blue line? A lot of people obsess about the blue line. And like when it crosses under zero, that's a sell. That they don't even use the red line. Then there are other people that say, if it's in a downtrend, downtrend under the ATR trailing stop or the 50, you wait for the red to cross the blue. As you see, it didn't work here because it's still in an uptrend. 
So it's a key to use the ATR trailing stop and the MACD. Just I can't stress that enough. And then what you do, and then I'll turn off the record part, is then what you do is this. Is I, this is only the MACD. All it is is the three moving average minus, uh, subtracted from the 10 moving average. And then the, uh, the blue line is a moving average of that red line. So if this is higher than where it was 16 days ago, then the blue line's going to slope up. So that's how you anticipate the blue line. So like here, the, this was a lot higher than where it was here and then it upticked. This was lower than it was and it starts rolling over. So that's one. So if you just determine that, uh, if you want to look at that. The other is, like I said, the ATR trailing stop and the moving average, you can use a lot of different indicators, but I'm trying to determine if you're in an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, like I said, when you get this looking like an uptrend and the ES above it also, but you have a lot of other indexes getting plowed, you, the probability is they're going to break down the up, even if it's not today. And you could see the strength on the upper left of the NASDAQ. Now, the next thing I want to show you was this, and then I'll turn off the record part. I think it's really cool. So we're going to try to go in here, and I'll show you on trading view if I could get it up here. Let me see if I have it with the chart. Because I had it all set up for you of basically the uh, two moving averages. That's all you're looking at. Two moving averages to determine what the uh, the MACD is. That's all I'm doing. So I'll just show you this way. So we're going to take gold or ES or whichever one you want to use. So this red line is the difference between the 10 simple moving average and the three. So we're going to take everything off. Well, we can make this the 10. There. We're going to take off the ATR trailing stop. There's the 10. So what's the 10 do? It takes this day and then it subtracts back here, 10 days. That's how you know it's turning up because this day is higher than that day. So, but then you got to have the kicker. You got to have this. So I want to see, I thought you could press copy. Yeah. Well, not letting me do it. Nope. All right. So all I'm doing in here is I'm taking another moving average. So we're going to take just simple moving average. Believe it or not, it's not under moving average. It's under SI, simple moving average. We're going to make that three. Now, I think this is a big deal. You don't have to use it. But I want to show you because it's really, I think it's interesting, but I think everything with the market's interesting. Oh. So this is pretty cool and I'll show you why. So what you're doing in here is the short term is a three moving average. So if it's higher than where it was three days ago, it's going to go up. So the, on the other hand, the other one is a 10 period. So guess what? Well, where was it 10 periods ago? It was here. So the red line, the 20, is going to go up slower than the blue line. See that width? And that's why they ate, uh, the MACD is that high. So it's all about the width. So pretty cool to watch that happen. Now, if this futzes around for a couple of days, then the longer term is going to catch up and the shorter term is going to go here and they're going to get back near zero. And that's how you get this back to zero. So I hope that helps. Let me take this off record. So give me one second.
ah, I'll record the whole half hour. So I think I'm supposed to, and I don't know how that works, but uh, let me just check and be sure. Yeah, so I'll just leave it on and show you what we're doing. So now what you're doing is this. So you're taking that, that short term and you're taking the 10 day, 10 period, because you might do it short uh, with the other end, uh, time periods. So the problem is if you're a trader, if it does that, then this is going to go back up because you're going to take the that bar and take out a lower bar. So that's going to hook back up. Now, I'm not sure that's going to happen. But if that hooks back up, then this is going to be higher than 16 days ago, and the blue line will go up as well. That's one scenario. The problem is you have to look at a lot of different uh, indexes, I think. So let's go take the transports, totally opposite chart. So what are you doing there? Well, you see that it's here. So you take that day and you take out three days before. Yep, that's why the blue moving average, the short term is hooking down. Now, the interesting thing is that the red line, because this here is lower than it was 10 days ago, the red line's going to hook down too. So what that means, if you took off the actual bars, these are going to get real close to each other. And that's why it's at the zero line. Now, if this continues down, then the red line will probably go here while the, uh, the blue line will go here while the red hasn't turned down too much because you had this consolidation. So it'll widen again, but it'll be more negative. So if this has another bar down, then this is probably going to go down to here, the red line. So that's all about anticipation. But if you didn't care about that, all we're caring about right now is we're caring about this. We're caring about the hook down. And like I said, this is just an oscillator. And all it's doing is trying to give you a probability of direction. So if this is overbought, under the 50 moving average, but it's over that, that gets a little rough. So what do I do? Number one, I try to take where support is. Number two though, is I'm watching that hook down. So that's why I didn't buy up here. It was just too overbought, just too overbought. Just keep that in mind. Just too darn overbought to go and mess around uh, on, that's the way I look at it. Just too darn uh, overbought. So it's all about probability. So when I watch uh, gold, the actual metal, too darn overbought, even though it's over this, if I'm watching a bunch of different products overbought and they're hooking down, then I'm not going to chase this. That's all it is. It's all about probability. So Russell, yeah, I tried to get overbought Darn right, I wasn't going to buy it up here. In fact, I looked to short it up here at resistance. So it was overbought at the moving average and price resistance. So you got two things. Price resistance, moving average resistance. Now, which one's more important? I think price resistance. So the more times that you can connect like little tops or bottoms, that becomes important. But you might say, well, it had that little wick. That's right. So it's overbought at resistance, but you didn't have a reversal within those patterns. So when I see it overbought at resistance, that's when I go to a shorter term pattern. Oh, let's take it an hourly. Make it easy. There. So number one, when did it start hooking down? Was it here? Or was it back here? So let's go look again. So you go to daily. So on the first, it was up here and had a little reversal, but this had the follow through today. So let's go back to an hourly. So it had this possible reversal on the first, right in here, started falling apart. 
then once it broke there, you knew it was on its way down and you knew it was going to hook down because it had a follow through. How about the NASDAQ? Not yet. That's the art. It hasn't followed through to the downside. How about the ES? Well, that looks like it sort of has. That's an hourly. This is what I'm going to be watching the rest of the day. And this is what I'm going to be showing the chart patterns mastery is this. What do you do here? By the way, the red is just an intraday like VWAP thing. You don't have to use that. But this is what I'm going to be watching. You got the hourly ES on the left looking ominous. Ominous, but it hasn't broken. If it does, there's nothing underneath. And you know, I love doing the crane. Well, a lot of subscribers like my Kramer imitation going, there's nothing. So there's nothing underneath. That's how Kramer was in 2007 slash eight. So this is what I'm going to be watching right there. So I'm going to be watching to see if this breaks there. I think the key is, like I said, correlated indexes. Watch this right here. That's Wednesday at 4 a.m. Wednesday at 4 a.m., the NASDAQ was here under that level. So it was here, about 200 points lower, 170 points lower. So then it comes down to if this breaks under that, then you got to think the probability is that's going to break as well. Or let's put it this way. You don't have to play it. But I'm certainly not going to play it on the upside when one is breaking down and they have similar charts. So you got one. I mean, these look very uh, similar to me. Remember, I don't have the 50 up on the right. I was showing you uh, two lines. But what I see is if this breaks right in this zone, then you got to think this is going to break to the downside, not the upside. So it's still, you know, it could still go either way. It's just that when I see a group of indexes going down, not up, I, I just have to look for a sell in here. But to me, it's all about the point of no return. So the point of no return, because these daily charts look so similar. The point of no return is if this breaks under here and under here. Then I think the probability is goes up a lot more that this is going here, not here. All about probability. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Now, if you're worried, I mean, I do this all the time. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. What do I do now? Because this is where I screw up uh, sometimes, or a lot of times, is do you go and buy certain stocks that are overbought above the 50, short certain stocks that are over uh, so, uh, overbought under the 50, or do you short the stocks that are extended that haven't gone like this? And then I have a habit of doing too many trades in... And not doing this, not seeing the forest through the trees. Just going and shorten a stock that has that pattern, like we just talked about in the ES, is hooking down, like you see, and go to a short term chart and just play it to the short side all day. Like here, I'm a little annoyed I didn't play it right there. So you're taking something that is already hooked down and that group, the transports, is already acting bad. And so you look for some kind of consolidation to pound it out to the downside. So, I mean, that's uh, the way I look at it in there. Just pound, uh, That's what you're looking for. So right now, what do you do? Well, you got the ES down 11. That's not telling you a lot. NASDAQ near its high. That's not telling you a lot. Because the problem is the thing that made the markets go down, in my opinion, was the bond market. But this doesn't care at the moment. 
So that's uh, that's going to be the uh, million dollar question in the last two hours. But I'll tell you, I'll give you a little tell of what I think. What I think is that companies can buy back stock till the last 10 minutes. The bond market getting trashed like this should be hitting the NASDAQ. And it's not. So what stocks have the biggest buybacks? Well, a lot of NASDAQ stocks. So I'll show you what we're talking about. Apple refuses to go lower. And you see that, refuses to go lower. How about on the right? How about Microsoft on a one minute? That refuses to go lower. In fact, when companies have buybacks, bearish patterns are less likely to work until the last 10 minutes. So as you see, they both just are Teflon. There are a number of, uh, of NASDAQ stocks. You know, the QQQ is holding up. There are a number of NASDAQ stocks that have massive buybacks. So the last minute they could get nailed. So that's what we're going to be watching the last 10 minutes. Now, is it going to be reflected through the QQQ, which has end-of-day stuff? Or is the ES really going to get, you know, plowed? Because keep in mind, a lot of big NASDAQ stocks are in the ES. So Meta has a big buyback. Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, uh, Meta, Apple... Tesla, NVIDIA, and that's what I'm seeing. Broadcom has a big buyback. Wow, that's amazing. It refuses to go lower. So all heck could break loose the last 10 minutes. And we're going to try to play that accordingly. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, they... Um, just to let you know, Darren, uh, in the restream, they were supposed to change it to 130, which I they did. So I don't know why that didn't happen. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't see it, but it is recorded. So the whole thing's recorded, and uh, just to let you know. So as you see in here, you can't tell a thing. Yet. It just seems like to me when the bonds are on their low, this is an accident waiting to happen on the NASDAQ, but it hasn't yet. So the first thing is, do I go on something like that does have some kind of bear flag in the NASDAQ? Oh, that sure looks like a bear flag to me. Why wouldn't it work? What's the only reason it wouldn't work is because of buybacks and some support just underneath. So... No, I'm talking about the buybacks in the last 10 minutes. So it doesn't have to be the strong stocks. It's just a lot of them are elevated because the NASDAQ is up. So it's not just the strong stocks. So, and I'm not going to short the strong stocks. I'm talking about trading indexes the last 10 minutes. So that's what I'm talking about doing. And uh, not, the strong, not necessarily the strong stocks. Um, but you do have a point. If the, if the NASDAQ was down 60, let's say, and Apple refuses to go lower, darn right I'd short that. But right now, I don't have enough criteria to do it. So yeah, if a stock refuses to go lower, barring any you know great news, I know they have an event coming, yeah, I'd probably want to pick on Apple. No pun intended, I'm not that creative. So just uh, want to let you know. So that's the things I look at is relative weakness and strength. Now, keep in mind, you can have overbought in a downtrend on um, one minute hourly. It doesn't work as well on a weekly or a monthly, but it is a danger sign. So because of this, what do you believe? Do you believe the monthly oversold? Uh, overbought. So if you look, it's under the ATR trailing stop. Do you believe that ridiculously overbought? Or do you believe the weekly oversold? Yeah, that's a tough one. So what do I do? I wait for the tell. It's going to be, I know it's annoying. It's going to be a better sale under there because that'll probably hook back down. So I hope that helps. I hope you, uh, you enjoyed that. And like I said, you could go back to the recording and listen. But like I said, I hope that helps. 
So I use a lot of other things, especially companion indexes and stocks. So take care.